Okay, I am recording now and welcome everyone. Let me go ahead and change my screen sharing. One moment, please. Um, by the way, I should start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Stacy Magadans. I am one of the librarians here in Fowl Library. I'm in charge of electronic resources. So all of this stuff that we have online, um, it's kind of my job to ride herd on it. Uh, so today we will be talking about how to um, use some of these resources in your classes and best practices for linking to them. Uh, and I will talk about why that matters. I'm going to set myself a timer so that I do not run over. All right, so um, if you need to leave, that's fine. I will send the, the link to the recording out to the um, academic listserv and it will go into our list of um, recorded workshops in the library's YouTube channel, which you can find our YouTube channel on the library's website. So, um, Welcome everybody again. Um, let me say first uh, why special attention to linking is required when you're using library resources. Um, you may recall the discussion uh, earlier this year when um, at the beginning of the COVID-19 closures, many, many online publishers and information providers uh, abruptly made their resources available free uh, to support this sudden change to online learning, um, which was wonderful uh, and has now sadly mostly ended. Um, but if they're free, that means normally they are in fact behind paywalls. They are restricted to only those users who are paying for them. Uh, that's a familiar notion if you're, for example, subscribing to something like uh, Prime Video or Netflix, you have to pay a fee in order to get a login and get to the content. So when you are talking about library resources for which the library is paying on behalf of the whole campus, um, access to them is restricted. Uh, one way to restrict access is to require a login. Um, that's uh, familiar to most people. Another way is to um, look at the IP address where the user is coming from. So, for instance, if you are physically sitting on campus using the campus network, you will never be asked to log in to one of our paywalled resources because that resource will see that you are sitting on the CSUSB campus using one of the computers with a CSUSB IP address and it will know that you belong to a subscribing institution. Now when we are all away from campus as we are now, um, things become a little different. Um, you may be more used now to logging in uh, because you are at home uh, and that process is really seamless when it works correctly. Uh, we try to make it as invisible as possible to place as few demands on the user as possible. But when you are constructing the link, that's just a thing that you need to be aware of. Um, there's a little bit of code that you can include in your link, or you can, instead of having to do that, link to things where um, a permanent link has already been provided to you. So I will discuss um, different strategies for that today. If you have any questions, um, certainly uh, in the, let me know. Uh, you are all muted currently, but if you need to ask a question, um, do so. And I will try to pause periodically to answer questions as well. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So you should currently be seeing the John M. Fowle Library homepage. Please let me know if you aren't. <laughs> so I mentioned uh, the library's linking uh, guide, and I did put that URL into the chat, but there's several ways that you can find it. Um, one way is here in OneSearch, if you just type the word linking, it will direct you 
to the linking to library resources guide, uh, which is here, and I will pull it up. It looks like this. Um, so we have here the basics of linking. There's linking to all kinds of different resources covered here. I won't be doing all of these. We're just going to talk about articles or article like material and ebooks today. Um, another way that you can find this linking guide, um, if you are in Blackboard, for instance, and here I am logged into Blackboard after getting into My Coyote, um, right here on the main Blackboard page, there are some library resources for faculty, and there it is again. Uh, right there. So another easy way to find it. Okay, so um, I think I'd like to start with linking to ebooks first. But let me take a moment to um, go over these basics here. Um, since we are all off of the campus network, um, pretty much everyone is going to be routed through this little bit of code, which is what we call a proxy server. And uh, we use this little bit of code when we are constructing links to library resources that we pay for. In other words, things that aren't free. And if you are linking directly to a resource like that, you will need to include this little bit of code in your link. So it would look something like that. Uh, this is a fake uh, address, obviously this is not real, but people are often puzzled because yes, it does have two HTTPs in it, that, that's normal, that's how that would look. Um, but there are some other ways that, that you can link that will sort of take care of that for you and be less work. Um, for example, you can link to a record in OneSearch or some of our full text articles and ebooks will give you what is called a uh, permalink and you can choose to link to the permalink that will do most of the work for you. So let me start with ebooks. Now you can go ahead and take a look at the ebooks guide here. I have some uh, basic instructions with a few illustrations. Um, some specifics relating to various platforms. So that's there for you to review later. I will go ahead and just do some basic searching. So the first question is, how would you find if we have an ebook? So very simplest strategy for doing this is to use OneSearch here on the library's webpage. This is our biggest, broadest search of all of our resources. So I'm going to do a really simple search just to give you something to look at. You'll notice that when I start typing, I get some options unfolding for different types of material or different sections of OneSearch that I can look through. So what I want when I am looking for ebooks is books and media here at CSUSB. So I have my words typed out, couples counseling, and I'm going to go ahead and pick that section. And so here I am getting any book that CSUSB owns or has access to that includes these words couples counseling. Now, you'll notice this one is online. This one is a physical book up on our third floor. We can't get to the physical library facility just now. So if you only want ebooks, a couple of simple things you can do to whittle this list down. The first one is only show me the things that are full text online. And that's this limiter here. So I will select that. And it has weeded out that thing that was up on the third floor. Okay, so no physical items are on this list anymore. Now, occasionally, depending on the subject that you are doing, you might get some things that are online that aren't actually books. Uh, in this example I did, we have lots of videos, streaming video, 
uh, on this topic. And maybe that's just noise that you don't want to see right now while you are looking for ebooks. So the second limiter you might want to apply is this one, books only. So now I have applied two filters. I want only things that are online and only things that are books. So there we go. I am now only looking at things that are ebooks. Okay, so that's the simplest way to do this. Um, if you want to keep looking for nothing but ebooks, uh, you can keep these filters active. You can lock one or both of them, and that means they will stay on until you remove them. Okay, so. Um, some considerations about ebooks. Let me just look at a couple of these here. Um, when you click a title, you will get more information about that book. So here we have the title and authors. Um, when you scroll down, generally uh, you will see the table of contents, perhaps. Uh, this is a book of essays. So we have all of the essays listed. Um, there could be a summary. Uh, there could be subject headings, as such as we have here. So that's all things that can help you figure out if this is a useful book. You will also have the link to where this book is available. I will go there in a second. Um, but you will also have a note about how many users can be looking at this book at the same time. This is a consideration if you want to use this for example, for a required reading. Um, some of our books like this one have unlimited simultaneous users. Any number of people can be looking at this book. Any number of CSUSB people can be looking at this book at the same time. That's cool. Um, but you will also find some that have user limits on them. So let me pull up a couple of examples so that you can see this. Um, this is a book, this is a title that I know. Uh, so again, if you are looking for a particular book and wondering if we have it as an ebook, you can just throw the title into this same search. So this is one that I know we have bought the license to. Here it is, my first one. And when I look at this record, um, it says this one is limited to one user at a time. So only one person can be looking at this book at the same time, right? Uh, we do not allow on our eBooks what people would think of as checkout periods. They're always just online and the only limits placed on them are how many people can be viewing them at the same time. Unlimited is common. Um, you will find one user. You will also find three users. Here's another one. Nursing theorists. Look. Oops, I need an S. So this one, when I look at it, has a three user license. Um, sometimes when we know something is being used as a textbook, we might even buy more licenses than that. Um, this one is a frequently used textbook and we were not able to buy unlimited users, but we bought six simultaneous users. So this is just a thing to be aware of um, if you are intending to use the book in a course setting, you might want to consider how large your course is. Um, you know, how uh, do you want to have only a certain section of the book? Maybe it's easier to get just the PDF and put it in your course, or do you want to refer people to the whole book? Okay. Um, are there any questions about that portion? Feel free to chime in if there are. Okay, here I will go on. 
So I'm back to my original search here for couples counseling. Um, I'm going to look here again at this particular book, which has, um, as we said before, unlimited user access. So there's a couple of things I can do here. If I want to put a link to this book in my course, the first option I have is this up here at the top, which is labeled permalink. Permalinks are your friends. That means they are provided uh, stable links, links that should always connect for you. So when I click this permalink, it gives me this, which is fairly short. And I can go ahead and copy it, right? And all of these links that are in one search, the permalinks in one search, all you have to do is just copy them and then paste them into your uh, course page. So I am going to, just to show you that real briefly, I am popping over to Blackboard. I am going to pull up one of my faux courses that I use for demonstration. So here I am, and I am going to go into my content section. And I actually already have here some links that I have done before, um, but I will just show you how this works. Um, the simplest way to do this under build content is just to choose a web link. And I will call this uh, couples counseling ebook, right? You can name it wherever you want. And I will just paste the uh, link that I just copied. There it is. You can see it starts with a CSUSB identifier there, so that's good. Um, I can give it a description if I want, right? Or you can just leave it blank. Um, and frankly, that's really all that you need to do with it. Um, by default, these always uh, say open in a new window, and, and yes, that's what you want to do with them. Um, so any restrictions you want to place on it, that, that's specific to your course, but I'm just going to say submit. And here it is. It has gone ahead and added that for me. So when I click on it, it's going to take me to that same record. Here it is, this same record that I, um, that I was just looking at. And I see that there is a question in chat. Are there different links to different chapters in an ebook? Yes, there are. And let me show you some of that. So I actually put one here in my sample Blackboard course. This is one I did before. But just let me show you how this one works. Um, this is a, an ebook central book. So let me go ahead and click this. Oh, here, it didn't like me because I was in this earlier, sorry. So here, I have linked out to a particular section of this book. And um, once it loads up, there it goes. Here is the actual text. And you know, you can tell your students, please read pages one through 30, okay? Um, and in this, for instance, you do get, you can navigate to the section you want to link to, and you can use this share link function. But let me start this over from the beginning. So let me close this. And I am going to go back here to, for example, this, this book. I'm going to follow this link to the book itself. Okay, and here on this ebook, I can, I can sort of scroll through the table of contents here. Um, and you will notice that most of these sections give you an option to download uh, a, a limited portion of the book as a PDF, a PDF that does not expire. Um, it does, it's yours to keep once you have have it, but you're limited to 70 pages at a time. So 
you know, that's fine if you want to go ahead and download something, but perhaps you want your students to read uh, all of part three, or perhaps you want them to read, here's chapter 15, and you would just prefer for them to read it online. Okay, so I can click into that. Here is my chapter 15, and here I have a share link. And this is giving me, again, what we would think of as a permalink or a stable URL. Um, this links you to the current page of this book. So yes, uh, you, can, you can deep link into, into most of these books. Um, so again, I would copy it and I would paste it. Now, I have not talked about uh, ProQuest eBook Central uh, linking. You'll notice again that this has a link that says CSUSB in it. Um, it's actually okay to link to just this. You don't actually need to add any particular information to it. Um, although if you did, it wouldn't hurt. Um, but here on the guide about ebook linking, um, I do talk about ebook central. And here I see you can share a link. Uh, and you don't have to add the proxy prefix. Uh, eBook Central is using a different method to recognize CSUSB users. So um, this would be safe to just go ahead and copy paste. And that's what I did on the one I, I showed you a second ago. Did that answer the question? Hopefully. Um, let me show you another one um, on a different platform. Many, many of our books are on the ProQuest eBook Central platform as, as this one was, but let me show you one that isn't. Let me go back to my, here I am, I'm back in OneSearch. Um, I am going to, again, pull up a specific book because I know this one is on a different platform. Um, the library gets books from quite a number of different platforms. Uh, ProQuest eBook Central is the most common. Um, probably the next most common is JSTOR. Oops, Nations, not Notions. Uh, we also have EBSCOhost eBooks. We have a variety of other smaller platforms. But here is the specific book that I was looking for. And here again, it will provide me the link to it. This is available at JSTOR. And it, JSTOR books have an unlimited number of users, so yay. Let me go out to this one. Okay, so here I am at kind of the home page for this book. And again, if I scroll down, I can sort of go through the table of contents for this. Now, again, I could copy the permalink, which would take my students here. And they just need to know to click on that. But if you wanted to either link them to this main page of the book, sort of the landing page for the book, it is providing you here with a uh, stable URL. And if I wanted to go to a particular chapter, for example, here's chapter one. Here we are at the particular chapter once that finishes loading. And again, here it's pointing me to a stable URL. Now, Take a look for a moment at this stable URL. You will notice that it contains this bit of code, libproxy.lib.csusb.edu. Unbeknownst to all of us, we are routed through the proxy because we followed a link from OneSearch and those are automatically proxied. Um, and if I point again toward my linking library guide, you will remember that the proxy includes that 
bit of code in it. Why is that happening? That's because I am off the campus network at the moment. I am just at home, right, on my regular uh, connection. So it's fine for me to copy that. I don't have to do anything else to it because it already includes the important bit of information. Okay, yay, simple, that's good. Let me try to show you though what would happen if you were, for instance, using the VPN. I don't know if anybody does. Uh, you might, depending on some of the functions you need to do for work. Uh, or if you were, I know we're not doing that now, but if you were in your uh, office or otherwise on the campus network, let me get out of some of this and just restart. Okay, so here, now I am on the VPN. I'm gonna go to that same book. I'm gonna load it up fresh. And you will see that it will behave differently. See now, that bit about libproxy csusb.edu is not there anymore nor is it up here, right? Or if I go to my chapter, again, you will not see it. Why is that? It's because I am now on the campus network virtually, even though I'm not sitting on campus. And so the proxy isn't needed. So it has dropped out of the discussion, right? It's not there anymore. So if you are accustomed to being on the VPN and you want to be creating links, if I were going to link to this, now I need to do something to it because it isn't containing libproxy.lib.csusb anymore. So for this one, what I would have to do is copy that URL, and I'm just uh, doing control C to copy it. And I would go back here to Blackboard. I would be creating a web link. And I will just do this as JSTOR book. Now I would paste that URL, right? And that's, that's nice, but it doesn't include any of that CSUSB library proxy information. So what I would need to do is go up here, let me get back to my main page, and I will just copy this little bit. Again, control C to copy. I will hop back into Blackboard and I have pasted it just like that. There's libproxy.lib.csusb all the way up to that equal sign with no spaces. And that is a good link. So no matter how you get it, if you either have to build it yourself or you're just copying it because it's already there, as long as it includes that proxy information, you are cool. All right, I am going to take myself off of the network. So now I am not connected to the campus network anymore. I am just on my regular home internet connection. And now when I click on it, you see the proxy is back because the proxy is now telling JSTOR that I belong to CSUSB. Okay, that's a little bit of a long explanation of proxying and why you need it. Um, are there any questions about that? Or any questions about finding ebooks? Okay, hearing none, I will move on. Um, we've done books, right? Ebooks thus far in one search. But you can also, of course, do articles. Now I'm going to reset all of my filters. I'm going to do a brand new search here in OneSearch. 
So we were looking for books before, but of course OneSearch also covers uh, a wide range of articles. So the quick and easy way to do this is just in OneSearch to type out your keywords. And this is my demo that I always do. Now again, this choice of sections is unfolding for you as you type. We were looking for books before, but now we're not. We're looking for articles. So I just want the article section. The rest is noise to me at this point. So here I am, I am only getting articles, okay? And again, we may run across some here that are not immediately available online because we try to cast a pretty wide net. So I can go ahead again and say, only give me the things that are online. And you know, there are some other limiters you could apply if they are relevant to you. Um, for instance, uh, peer reviewed, if you want to apply that as a limit, you certainly can. Um, but I think I'll just leave it for now. So before we were looking at ebooks, now we are looking at articles, as you can see here. Um, now, same thing. If you click on the title, you will get uh, more information. So, for instance, here I have my citation. Uh, here's uh, the abstract of the article. I can go ahead and look at that. Here's the link for where it is available. This one is a pay database. This is one we have to pay for, Science Direct. Again, if you want a link to it, you can just choose the OneSearch link, choose the permalink, copy it, and then paste it into Blackboard just like we've been doing. And it will again take the student to this page where they would need to click the link to the actual article. Okay. Um, and I want, uh, let me come back to that in just a second. I want to show you something else first. Uh, you will notice that some of these are tagged as open access. Whereas this one, which I said is behind a paywall, is not tagged that way. This is actually important. Um, we are all in favor of open access, yay. Um, open access is good. And this one is from uh, an open access source, so is this one. Um, this one, I believe, is from Highwire Press Free. Uh, so anything that is free, like this one, not behind a paywall, right? And so only things that are behind paywalls need our proxy. So this one says free access, right? And I have my little unpaywall plugin, and it says, yes, this is free. And OneSearch told me this is free, 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 free. So in the case of something like this that's free, I don't have to do anything to it. I would just copy my URL, paste it into my Blackboard page. I do not need to add anything because this is free to everybody in the whole world. I don't need to force anybody to log in as a CSUSB user. And in fact, that might interfere with access to this because um, we can't know everything that's free on the web. So this is a case where it's free, cool, you just copy and paste it. But on this example that I was showing you, sorry, this one, number three, uh, where I said this one is in ScienceDirect and it is not noted as being free, okay? Now, again, you can avoid that whole decision process if you just link to this, whether it's free or whether it's not, the permalink in OneSearch will take care of that for you. No worries for you, okay? So that's what I would recommend. But if you prefer to link out directly to the item, so in this case, I can go to ScienceDirect, and let's say I want to link my students right here. I don't wanna to have to have them do another click. That's fine, I can do that. Um, so in this case, you'll notice here, libproxy.lib.csusb.edu. Okay, cool. 
that's all fine. I can just copy that and then paste it into my page again. So again, this is science direct, whatever article. And I just paste it and my pasting included that bit of proxy information. So that's all great. That's all I need to do. I can say submit that one. And then when my students click on that, they will go direct to that article itself, right? So that's cool. Um, I can just copy that that way. There are some other reasons why you might want to get out of OneSearch. Okay, I mean, OneSearch is very convenient, but OneSearch doesn't cover everything that we have. Um, it covers a fair amount of content, but it certainly isn't everything that you might want to know about. So let me go back to our homepage and let me choose a database which has content that OneSearch does not know about. So I'm going to choose a database here. I'm going to pick uh, one of our nursing databases, uh, which is called CINAHL. And CINAHL includes a special kind of material, uh, which is called uh, evidence-based care sheets. And so I am going to pick one of those. Let's say I want my students to read a few of these. I will just pick one here to show you. Oops, I need my apostrophe. So here is an evidence-based care sheet designed for nurses. Um, and here, here it is, it has the full text. So this is an EBSCOhost platform. When you are linking to content on an EBSCOhost platform, they will provide you with a permalink right over here. So I click permalink and here it is. And you will notice that it includes here at the beginning right there my proxy information that i need so again all i have to do is just copy that and then paste it into blackboard and all of the the hard part is taken care of i'm cool right uh, another type of database uh, with content that uh, one search does not know about let me pick one of our business databases uh, we have a database of industry reports, for instance. This is not covered in OneSearch, but this is some great um, market data. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me today. Fine. We'll pick something else. Okay, so here's Mergent Online. This has company data, uh, financial data, news, and other items. So here I could, for example, link to this page of uh, financial and stock data about Microsoft. Once it comes up, please internet, don't fail me. Here we go. Um, this does not have a stable URL that it's providing me, but again, I can go ahead and copy this up above because it includes libproxy.lib.csusb.edu. So for many databases, that would be safe to do. Um, for EBSCOhost and for ProQuest, it is not safe to do. For EBSCOhost and ProQuest, you always want to use the permalink, the stable URL that they are providing you. Um, there are a couple of more databases uh, to that have special considerations. Um, Westlaw is one that you can link to portions of it, but you're really going to have to get my intervention on that because you have to construct the link in a particular way. But you know those are rare exceptions, and they're covered here in the instructions. So there was a question in the chat, is there a list that shows what databases are not covered by OneSearch? Um, no, really there isn't. Um, 
but as far as how could you know what's not covered by one search, um, nothing specialized uh, in the sense of a specialized type of data. Uh, for example, company profiles, market reports, uh, statistics, um, anything basically that isn't article like. Right? It knows about the ebooks that we own. It knows about a really wide variety of uh, journals, uh, articles from journals. So it has a really good selection of that. But specialized material like the uh, uh, evidence based care sheets from CINAHL, it does not know about those. It knows about a lot of the articles from CINAHL, but it doesn't know about their specialized evidence-based care sheets. So that's my, my general advice on that question. Okay, so I covered ebooks first, and then we talked about articles. I demoed a little bit about how you can link to these in Blackboard. Um, I think I will, for the moment, stop sharing and see if anyone has any questions. Thanks for watching online course readings. Find out more at libguides.csusb.edu slash linking.